All right, Shalom, it's Karak Karak. First and foremost, want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elder apostles at Great Millstone at Rule Well, and greetings in Barakathon. Salutation to all you sincere Akim throughout the four corners of the earth that are bringing out this unadulterated truth and risking your lives to do so. And salutations and greetings to all the sisters that, uh, the few sisters that watch us as well. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in. This is uh, the Book of Lamentations, chapter 4. And I'll start at uh, 17. It says, as for us, our eyes as, e <clears throat> Salakia, as for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Right. So and, and, and it all boils down to understanding uh, your surroundings and, and, and knowing who you are. And, um, you know, because like the saying in the world, uh, to, to, to know where you're going, you got to know where you came from, you know. And that's the uh, biggest thing that plagues the minds of uh, uh, Israelites, especially here in America, you know, because they think this is a place uh, where you can prosper, you know, just because you can go from being a janitor to being a doctor, you know, in a matter of years, you know, our people think that this is a place for, you know, that that's built for, for them to succeed. When the reality is America is nothing but a big, uh, a big slave camp, basically, you know, no matter if you're a janitor or your doctor, you're still a slave and more so mental than physical, but you belong to the corporation. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So, uh, let me read that again. It's Lamentation 4 and 17. It says, as for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help, right? Because even though you can get a good job and they set up programs uh, you know, for uh, African Americans or Latinos, or Native Americans, it's still it's it's not help, cause help would be uh, restoring us back to our nation. You know, uh, pay, uh, recompensing us for uh, the slave labor that our ancestors gave them. You know, where you know they paid little to nothing for a slave and and, and got free slave labor, man. You know, so you know. Uh, legislation and uh benefits through the government that's not help man really that's that's a, a sniff you get what i'm saying okay so it says uh as for us our eyes as yet fell for our vain help in our watching we have watched for a nation that could not save us and true that the so-called white man which is the leader of the world the king of the world they never gave a shit about the Israelites, man. And history has proved that, man, over and over and over again. But our people, minds are so dilapidated that they think that there's, there, you know, there's, uh, there's prosperity here in America. When the, when the reality is you were bought here to, uh, to be slaves. And it goes deeper than what the uh, so-called white man's intentions were. The Heavenly Father sent us over here as a punishment, man. You know, so it's pretty much just like you're trying to prosper in jail. OK, and especially dealing with a nation that never gave a shit about us. OK, verse 18, they hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled for our end is come. Right. And that's the reality of the, the moral of the story of the scriptures, man. They hunt our steps. They've done it since the inception of this place. And they still uh, are continuing to do it. You can't turn on the TV without seeing a black man getting gunned down, you know, or or, or being beat up by the police, you know, or or being harvested for uh, organs or being stolen for the um, for sex trafficking. Who are the main people that that that, that uh, that's brought against? Israelites, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. So and that's the message. Look, fuck this place, man. Our help is on the way. And what's proof of that? America is crumbling. And the reason it's crumbling is because the biblical Israelites are waking up. And all, look, this is the history of kingdoms. They rise and then they fall. This kingdom is falling. And that's why we, we have a perpetual hatred towards our people. Because the message is, look, this kingdom is going to fall so that we can rule the earth. But, you know, the reality is our people don't have a ruling class mentality. But you will, you will, and it's gonna be by default. And you're gonna know it by pain and by death that you're supposed to be uh, rulers on the earth. Okay, 
the next scripture is Micah 2 and 10. It says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. Right. And you people that are set it on your leaves here, and your leaves goes back to, you know, like basically the, the dregs, you know, the backwash. And you people satisfied with a beer with backwash in it, you know? Even if you, you work for Congress or you got a, you're a doctor or a lawyer, that's dregs, man, compared to what we're supposed to be. You get what I'm saying? That's why the scriptures say, arise and depart. This is not our rest. This is, like I said, this was our prison sentence, and it's almost over. But look, you got niggas making jokes saying, hey, dear, dear Russia, Korea, uh, we don't know Trump. That's not our president. We didn't have any, man. And it's our people doing that. And the Edomites are the ones the most angry about what he's doing. But look at our people making jokes. It's like, hey, everything's funny to the to the uh, to the. It, it's funny until the jokes on you. And pretty soon the jokes gonna be on you. Why? Because the scriptures say, "Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. It shall destroy you with a sore destruction." And what's gonna be that sore destruction? Every type of way to die that you can fathom in your mind. That's what's coming. Why? Because the Most High is bringing judgment. On his people first, which are Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, then the rest of the world and the other nations. Okay? So the moral of the story is come back to the law, statutes, commandments, so you don't have to deal with that. But since you want to be settled on your leaves and you think this is your rest, you're going to be destroyed with this place. Why? Because that's what's coming. That's what's been written since the beginning. The scriptures say that the Most High declared the end from the beginning. And the end, the end means the end of this so-called white man's rulership and the end of our punishment and affliction for us to come into the kingdom of heaven. But you niggas, niggas don't want that. Niggas want to upset prophecy. Niggas don't want uh, the heavenly father to rule in his son, you know, in the nation of Israel. They don't want that. They rather keep, you know, same thing coming out of Egypt. Let's go back to Pharaoh. Simple niggas want to stay up under Pharaoh. But we don't, and that's the reason why this place is crumbling. Because the prophets go out and pull this place down through the spirit of the Holy Bible, man. And through the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, man. So it doesn't matter what, whether you want it to or not, it will. Okay? But, hey, our job is to be messengers and warn you. Look, your oppressors are coming down with, the, with, a, with a mighty sword. And if you're caught out there, if you don't have that protection, if you, your loins aren't girded, you're going to get crushed, plain and simple, okay? This is, um, this is the book of Psalms. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 10, and I started, uh, I started at 7. Psalms chapter 10, uh, verse 7. It says, His mouth is full of cursing. Talking about the white man. Okay. It says, His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. And right, that's the that's the reason our people are settled. Because the white man is full of deceit and fraud. You know, give uh, uh offering out promises that he doesn't intend to keep. So our people eat that shit up. And now look. Now they, they, they're starting to realize, look, this place was never for us. But, you know, it's, it's on a small level. But soon it's going to be full-fledged, full and it's going to be obvious. It's going to be right up in your face. Esau is going to pull the gloves off, and you're going to take his hat off, and his horn is going to stick out. Esau being the so-called white man. And you niggas are in trouble, man. You're in trouble. Why? Because the Most High made himself blameless. He sent his men out to warn you people against who the, the bite or uh, who... Uh, the, the race of people that the Bible considers the wicked and the devil that the Bible speaks of, man. And, you know, some people say, oh, all white people aren't bad. Well, look, that's your opinion. The scriptures say they are born wicked. You know what I'm saying? From the, from the, from the womb, they come out speaking lies and being deceitful. So now we're at the stage of seeing what's going on, you know, with war being propagated on all angles. Now we're just playing a waiting game. You know, we do our job. We go out there and get the blood off our hands and warn you, look, your oppressor is about to bring the boom down, you know, via uh, the spirit and power of Yahweh Shah, who is the, 
who the world ignorantly call God and, and, and Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, Psalms 10 and 7. It says, His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. And we can just look at the track record of the so-called white man. Look what he did to the Gadites, the Reubenites, you know, uh, over there in Central and South America, bring, uh, uh the Negroes over there in Haiti, the West Indies. It goes on and on and, uh, and around the whole world. Look what he's done in Iraq, Afghanistan. Okay. So it says, um, verse eight. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. And who's the poor? Who's at the bottom of the totem pole? Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And this goes way back to Cain and Abel, way back to Jacob and Esau. This is this is deeper than what meets the eye. This is a perpetual hatred being acted on acted out by uh the so-called white man, which is uh, Esau and the nation of Edom in the Bible, man, against you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And now, you know, why why, why isn't it so prevalent? It is, but why niggas can't see it is because it's not blatant like it was in the 60s or the 70s or in the 1600s or the 1800s. But pretty soon, like the scriptures say, there's nothing new under the sun. And this, this hey, like the book of Revelations 12, 12 says, it says, the devil know if he have but a short time. So he's coming down with great wrath, great wrath. And you can just look it up. You can look up King Alpha Plan, Project Megiddo, where they have specific plans to eradicate you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But look, and the irony is our people think this is their risk and that this society is for them and they can grow and they can become all they can be. No, what you're going to become if you don't arise, awaken from your slumber and come back to these scriptures you're going to be road kid. You're going to be mired. You're going to be mud. You're going to get stomped out. And then eventually you get hit with uh, nu uh, nuclear missiles, man. That's the reality of the story. Okay? So, uh, close out with this one. It's the book of Isaiah. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 31. And 1. It says, woe to them that go down to Egypt, meaning the land of bondage, which America is, which is America is spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. Why? Because this is a, 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 you know, a place where slavery made this place great. You know, the slavery of the Negroes and the Latinos and the Native Americans. That's what made America great. So that would um, render it Egypt in this scripture. Two, meaning twofold. It says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. And that's what our people do. They depend, they're solely dependent on the government, man. I can't remember who I, I saw a quote the other day. It says, when people depend on their government, they have totally lost. And, and you have. Because your government doesn't give a shit about you. Man, America's government don't even care about their own people, the Edomites. Edomites don't even care about Edomites. So you think they care about you people, man? And that's why I just came out. Trump's going to cut uh, uh, food stamps, you know, for uh, immigrants. And who are, who, who are the big part of immigrants in America? <laughs> the Latinos, man. Okay. It says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. And in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel need to seek their Yahweh, right? So what it, what it boils down to is if you're not hastening the day and, and looking forward to this world war that's about to break out, then you're in the wrong spirit. And it's a high chance you will die here in America, a brutal, harsh death, if you're not drafted to go fight over there in the uh, Valley of Jehoshaphat, okay? So the moral of the story is awake and come back to your heritage Understand who you are first and foremost. And twenty, this is twenty seventeen. You should you should want to know who you are and where you're from, okay? So and once you do that, you understand that we're supposed to live by the law, studies, commandments of this holy Bible. And if you deny to do that, you're gonna get crushed, man. You're gonna get crushed. Why? Because the so-called white man knows his kingdom is about over with. So he's going to 
um, strategically try to take out the people that are supposed to rule next, which are the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? It's the moral of the story, basically, of the Bible. Come out of that Gentile state of mind and return back to the Father, lest he destroy you. Okay? So with that, I hope uh, brothers and sisters were edified. And I will say, uh, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham, Shalom.